Beginning on the eve of the ninth lunar month of the Chinese calendar, people all across Southeast Asia celebrate the Nine Emperor Gods Festival, or Tesekan Ginjie. But if you're a foreigner here, you're more likely to know it as the week-long vegan festival. The origins of this festival are highly debated, but most people put it back to 19th century Phuket, an island in the south of Thailand. At that time, a wealth of tin was discovered beneath the ground, and so the government contracted Chinese workers to come and mine it. At some point thereafter, a Chinese opera company came to Phuket to entertain the workers, when they came down with some unknown illness. It was decided that to get better, they would take on a strict vegan diet and pray to the nine emperor gods from Daojiao, or Taoist religion. Now, many religions have this thou shall not kill style tenet, but most people choose not to follow it or to draw a line at their own species. The difference here is that they would take it seriously, and by doing so, they would bring good karma to themselves. And so was born a new tradition, a mishmash of Jay and Taoist beliefs and Thai and Chinese culture, all wrapped up into nine days every single year. So join me as we travel all around Yarrawat, Bangkok's Chinatown, to see what food is on offer from all of these restaurants that have veganized their entire menu for the festival. I am so excited to get stuck in. Taste Gang Ginjie is also celebrated in Myanmar, Singapore, Malaysia, Southern Vietnam, and Indonesia, but we're staying put in the heart of Southeast Asia, Thailand. One reason for that is budget, but mainly it's the pandemic which is still ravaging this part of the world. While citizens of countries like the UK and the US are receiving their booster jabs, most people living in Thailand, including us, are still waiting for our first vaccine dose. Because of this, none of the usual festivities are officially taking place, so we're going to keep an eye out regardless, but we are expecting fewer events, a quieter atmosphere, and our options being limited to established restaurants and malls over markets and street stalls. However, even if it won't be like the before times, I'm still so excited to fill up on that vegan goodness. Let's get something here. We can go with people. I'll get a corn one then as well. And then a uh, spring roll. Okay, we go. Health and safety first. It's hot. Can you see me sweating? <laughs> I am interested to try this one. It's purple. So I think it might be like taro, like a purple potato. Uh, feels kind of soft. It's nice, like sweet and savory. And then it's like a, uh, a peanut sauce. It gives it a little bit of spice, a little bit of uh, acidity kick. It's really nice. It's got a spring roll now. Spring roll, crunchy on the outside. Soft in the middle. Ah, there's the peanut one. This one looks, it's like an onion bhaji mixed with peanut, mixed with sort of bread. So I'm quite interested to taste this one. It's just like, um, it's fried, it's a donut. It's like a peanut donut, savory. Okay, we'll finish these and we'll try to get to a real restaurant. Okay, so I ordered a, a Thai milk tea, but instead of your typical cow's milk, we got some rice milk now. You try your one first, yeah. Thai tea. Oh wow. It's really nice. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Well, like the typical tea taste, obviously, but then the rice milk brings it together. There's a sweetness in there. Yeah, coconut coffee. I think this is coconut. You can some have some orange juice in. Mm. I think. Interesting. Yeah, I never, I never drink this before. Orange, very strong orange taste. You know, try it, and a strong coffee. Orange and coffee. It's a very interesting mix, I'll say. Your wine is much nicer. Of course. Okay. I'm really smart. I always order the delicious Quite drinks. Sweet. sweet. So good, so sweet, creamy. I know Thai and Chinese, but I don't know how to call it. I don't think we have this in the West, to be honest. Oh. I think that's maybe seitan, you know. Mm. Really good. Well, a little bit spicy, actually. <laughs> and then we got um, uh, tofu. It looks like maybe a deep fried tofu there. This one's actually crunchy. That's interesting. Okay, I'm just going to get a mouthful of everything together. You got a bit of every. <laughs> that's spicy. <laughs> We have everything in there. We got some cashews. We got some um, spring onions. That's delicious. That all comes together really nicely. 
Now while we are focusing an awful lot on the food aspects of this festival, we don't want to completely overshadow the religious or spiritual intent of it. Since everything has been limited or outright cancelled this year, we decided our best bet was to head over to Guanyin Shrine to get an insight on how avoiding the exploitation of animals plays an important role in Thai and Chinese culture. Another way to find vegan food in Bangkok is by looking for Guan Yin, who is the mercy goddess from Buddhist religion who has also been adopted by other Eastern religions. You can find her image on vegan magazines and posters, as well as vegan snacks. But do be careful because you can also find her image on vegetarian products. And I know no vegan wants to accidentally put cow's milk in their mouth. If you do find yourself in Bangkok, I recommend a visit to Guan Yin Shrine. It's just across from the famous Wat Trai Mit, the Golden Buddha Temple, and it's free to get in. A lot of tourists and a lot of locals come here to wish for good health for themselves and for their loved ones. Okay, should we go get some dessert? Whether it's making a sacrifice for Lent, giving money to the needy for Eid, or giving up any sort of work for the last two days of Passover, many religious ceremonies and festivals around the world have official guidelines, and Tezagan Ginje is no different. Whether you share the beliefs that make up this festival or not, I think we can all agree that it's important to remain respectful, and as such, there are officially 10 rules that you're invited to follow. So number one, is maintain a clean body, okay? Keep your body clean. I think clean not just for outside, like your body clean. I think they clean means you don't eat meat. Called lantong in Thai language means clean your stomach. Number two, clean your kitchen utensils and use different ones for people who are not doing the festival. Yeah, this actually is the same with Chan Chinese, same thing. Clean kitchen, clean everything, and clean. Oh, really? Yeah. The next one is wear white, which you can see we've both done today. It's very respectful, that is. Actually, this is for Buddha of Thailand. Oh, not just for J festival. Yeah. Normally, people go to temple. I Even them. like funerals, you wear white, right? In Thailand. Yeah, yeah. They, they wear white color. I think they, see, they think white color is... What is that word? Like clean, this? pure. Yeah, yeah, pure, pure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Number four is behave yourself mentally and physically. Don't hurt any person or animal. I, I, think, I think it's a little bit controversial, but I think um, Buddhism does tell you to be vegan. I really believe that. Um, Thailand's a Buddhist country and there's not that many vegans. I find quite surprising because of the idea of reincarnation and karma don't hurt others, including animals. I think that includes animals like every religion. Uh, number five, I'm well on board. Do not eat meat or any other animal-based products. Yeah. Extreme? <laughs> yeah, sure, that. they should do every day, I think. Like, yeah. in, in these days, you see, we have got many choice. There, there is yeah. choice, but like, there's a lot of choice right now. That's yeah. what you're saying, yeah? yeah? Yeah, this is my means. Like, re restaurant have more vegan dish yeah, yeah. these days. Obviously, this is like a mixed festival. This is like Chinese Thai culture. This is Jay and Taoist. So yeah, we're not eating like garlic and onion because um, the animals under the ground can be affected when you take them out of the ground, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think the Taoist part of that is about how these strong flavors affect your body, right? Yeah, yeah I don't really re remember is which kind, which one. They say they eat. If you eat that, you you got born easier. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. You say that because number six is no sexual activities, okay? Yeah, like I heard some monk in China, they can't have sex. It's they... like most religions, right? If you're really religious, then you, and you're really into the church or the temple or whatever, um, you don't have sex, right? Yeah. Number seven is do not consume alcohol. I guess that comes into all the other parts. If you drink the alcohol, then it's easier to break another rule. Difficult to control yourself. Okay, coming to the end now, we've got number eight. Do not take part in the festival if you're in a state of mourning. Maybe because like some of these rules, like if you're, if you're mourning, you should probably drink alcohol and have sex if you can. No, I think they, the, this festival, the means they make your peaceful more calm. Then these, these kind of people should join the festival, right? They should, yeah, definitely distract yourself, I think. Yeah. Probably a real reason there, but we don't. Anyway, <laughs> number nine, another person who can't 
do the festival is pregnant women. Maybe because the baby can't consent to a vegan diet. What do you think? It's child cruelty. <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> I think put your kids on a vegan diet. No pregnant women. That's weird. Okay. Number 10. Menstruating women. I just know like if you have, if you're pure, you can go to temple. You know what? You're right. Ceremonies. You can't attend ceremonies. I heard, heard like in some Chinese temple. But not everywhere. I think this, they think you are not pure. You're not pure. <laughs> you're not pure. They, they're worried, of, scared of sharks. Maybe I, I think so. As sharks. the day comes to an end, we become painfully aware of the lack of excitement that would usually emanate throughout Yarrawat. Yes, there is still plenty of vegan food to be had, but if this were any other year, people would be making their way to watch traditional Chinese opera, to purchase and release so-called food animals into the nearby river, or to watch a dragon dance through the streets. Like many areas around the world, Yarrawat has been hit hard by the pandemic, an economic downfall that we truly hope turns around for this beautiful and historic part of Bangkok. For the rest of the festival, we're going to be travelling around the rest of Bangkok to the new temporary hubs that have been set up for this year's festival. And we'll see you there in part two.